Today I'm stood in the IC200 Super Heroes exhibition in the Environmental Impact Area. Whilst in India during 2016, I saw irrigation systems in action, and their importance should not be underestimated. With a population in excess of 1 billion people, it's not surprising that the way in which water is utilised is hugely important. Water management in India has always been an important challenge for engineers, and some irrigation systems date back some 3,700 years ago. Sir Arthur Cotton, a British engineer, saw the potential to harness flows from the Godavari River, which is India's second longest river after the Ganges. Cotton once said that just one day's flow during flood of the Godavari River was equal to one year's flow of the River Thames in London. Cotton went on to successfully design and secure funding for future irrigation schemes. Cotton's legacy endures with on average 600 to 700,000 hectares of irrigation systems developed every year. In 1800, 800,000 hectares of land were irrigated. By 1900, this was 13 million hectares. And by 1947, a staggering 22 million hectares. The Great Anika is a dam built specifically to maintain and regulate the flow of water for irrigation. Its construction across the Kaveri River began almost 2,000 years ago, and it's still one of the oldest water regulated structures in use today. With structures such as the Great Anika, Irrigation systems have enabled greater crop diversification, with food grown all year round. In many states, the combined use of surface water and groundwater has helped increase the yield and efficiency of irrigation systems. Looking to the future, by 2025, total water demand is expected to equal water availability. Population growth and industrial demand will mean that farmers will have to produce more with less. A further challenge is how we account for extremes in our weather and how this will affect flooding and droughts not only in India, but globally. As an engineer, these are the problems I hope to solve, and by adopting a future-ready approach, you can too. One of my specialisms today is flood and coastal risk management, and I'd like to introduce you to another engineer, Ravafi Nair. Ravafi hails from India, and she's going to tell you a story of how the flooding and drought issues I've already mentioned inspired her to become an engineer, and more importantly, to do something about it. For the 1.3 billion people in India, flood and drought are not unfamiliar phenomena. The severe drought that happens in the first half of the year in many states in the country is followed by flood during the other half. This year, my hometown, located towards the south of India, was hit by the worst monsoon in 100 years, the after effects of which was devastating. For the past couple of years, such natural disasters have led to loss of life and infrastructure. While water scarcity in the summer and flood during the monsoon are seasonal, their recurrence and increasing severity requires a long-term strategy for water management. Now, the problem in India is that most of the irrigation system is dependent on the monsoon rains. My experience as a geotechnical engineer and my past experience in designing and implementing dewatering systems led me into thinking, why not design and establish permanent dewatering systems that are capable of lowering this flood water level and then store them in underground tanks? Uh, during the drought season, when it's all dry, we can maybe use this water, treat it, not just for irrigation purposes, but even for domestic purposes. Rainwater harvesting and storage in underground cisterns, known as tankers, is an age-old technique that is followed in Western Rajasthan and India. Using our current technology, we can develop advanced systems that can be used throughout the country. This thought was a driving force behind me pursuing for my masters in soil mechanics and environmental geotechnics in Imperial College London. I wanted my voice to be heard and my opinions valued. As you've just heard, not only is civil engineering simply about projects or infrastructure, it's also about people. It touches all of us in every aspect of our lives. We can influence tomorrow's world today.